Hi, welcome to Credly's payroll settings demo video. This video will focus only on the settings menu of the payroll module. Let's start from the very beginning with payroll settings. Switch on the main toggle and enter the effective date. I would recommend entering 1st April 2018 as the beginning of the financial year because this will tally your income tax calculations for investments that have already been declared by your employees. In payroll settings, in pay settings, pay cycle tab, enter the pay cycle for your payroll, monthly payroll. First to 31st is the standard, but if for your organization you have something like 21st to 20th, just enter the first day and the last day will be calculated on its own. If your pay cycle is anything other than 1st to 30th or 1st to 31st, uh, I would recommend changing the payroll uh, main toggle effective date to the previous month, say 1st March. Uh, just as, this is just so that the data gets taken from 21st of March to 20th of April. Similarly, set your pay leave and attendance input cycle. This can be anything as per your organization's policy. Payout date is the date the salary gets paid out. Uh, payroll date of joining cutoff date is the cutoff date beyond which a new joinee salary is not considered for that specific month. So for example, this is set as 15th. Uh, any new joinee after 15th of April or 15th of May, etc. will not receive their salary for the first month in the first month payroll. They will get it as arrears with the second month salary. Once this is done, move to payday calculation. Now, Credly by default considers weekly off and holidays as paid weekly offs and holidays. But as an organization, if uh, your policy is different and you do not consider weekly offs and holidays as part of your paydays, you can just turn this toggle to no. That way, your paydays will look like something like 25 or 26 and not 30, 31. Now, what happens to pending leaves or outstanding leaves that are uh, in a pending state on the day of the leave and attendance uh, cutoff, which you have done in the previous setting? So we have given an option to either auto approve it, auto reject it, or just keep it as pending. Also, there's an option to consider any outstanding or unactioned leaves beyond that cutoff date as LOP, as loss of pay. So you can just turn this toggle on or off depending on what your organization's policy is. Similarly, for outstanding anomalies, which are not regularized or rejected uh, before, uh, as on the uh, cutoff date, you can action it, you can either auto approve it or reject it or keep it as pending. If it is kept as pending, you will need to manually uh, approve it or regularize it uh, month on month, but any regularization will not impact the next month's payroll. Uh, there's also an option for you to uh, consider unapproved absence as loss of pay. So for example, uh, an employee has not come into office, but there is no record of a leave in the system. You could choose to mark it as loss of pay just by changing this toggle. So this is your payroll settings. When it is done, click on save and move on to the next 